Okay, so we're gonna take a minute, we're gonna walk through how to create an actual mix using playback. So right now we're running uh, a mix from the other night through the system. Uh, this is live band that we recorded on Thursday. Uh, so you can get a feel for how to create a mix that works for you. Um, for this video to be most effective, I encourage you to use headphones. Uh, make sure you have both ears in because we're going to talk about panning and putting instruments and vocalists in different positions. So you can see that I've got my in-ears in right now. I'm running through a wireless pack. Uh, we're running in-ear mix one. And so we've got a, a pretty good start to the mix right now. Uh, for creating an in-ear mix, um, we're going to create a different mix than what's going to be in the house. It's not as important for us as musicians and vocalists to hear everything exactly the same as what uh, the congregation is hearing. We want to hear what's important to us and that may be missing pieces. Uh, it may not be important that you hear the bass guitar, sorry, bass guitar players. Um, drum overheads may not be important for us. If you're a vocalist, we're going to want to hear other vocalists so that we're sure we're in pitch with each other. Um, so the key things to creating a good in-ear mix are going to be uh, tempo, so your, your click track, uh, hearing a reference instrument, where are we getting our pitch from? So a vocalist, where are you, you, where's your starting note coming from? Is it coming from the acoustic guitar? Is it coming from the piano? You wanna make sure that you have those turned up enough. So we're gonna dive into this mix. So we can see that if we go into kick and we wanted to turn up more of the kick, as we turn that up, we're gonna hear it. See how his love overcomes. He has done great things. So we've got Matt singing lead vocals here. He has done great things. If we wanted more, we just turn him up. Oh, now in this case, heaven, we didn't have a keys player. So we're not gonna be able to see keys. But if we wanted more electric guitar, we can go here, turn that up. Because these are linked, we're getting channel seven and eight are both turning up the same. Uh, it might be a little too much electric. If we did want more drums, we can go and turn those up. But again, the key to a good in-ear mix isn't necessarily hear the full band, it's to hear what's important for us in our roles. If you're a keys player, it's probably more important that you hear an electric guitar. Bass player, that you hear the kick drum so you can get that groove. Vocalist, so you can hear other vocalists. So let's let's talk about vocals for a minute. So in this case, Matt is our lead vocalist. So if we press in the pan button, we can see that he's panned right in the middle. If we turn this, you can hear that now Matt is only in our right ear. Okay. If we go the other way, you can hear that Matt is now only in our left ear. Okay. For lead vocalists, I would keep them either in the center or near center. Sometimes you may have two lead vocalists, so you may put them slightly apart. So let's say that we have Matt leading and we have Marissa leading. So we might want to take Marissa and put her a little bit in the right. And now you can hear that Marissa kind of stands out a little bit more because she's but a little bit to the right, and that's a little bit to the left. So now we're having that spatial separation. And we could take people like Amanda. She, she, we'll put her far left. And the reason I'm picking these directions is based on the stage layout for this practice. Amanda was on the far left, then Marissa, Matt, and Cindy, which we'll call Joe in this scenario. Uh, so I'm trying to put them in, when I'm singing, if I was up front, like let's say that I was Matt, I would want Amanda for the sun to left, because that's where, as I'm looking around, she's gonna be in my left ear, and Cindy's gonna be in my right. So that's why Amanda is gonna be further right. Uh, then we're gonna have uh, Marissa a little bit more. Let's actually put her over there. Uh, we'll put Matt. Touch to the right, Cindy slash Joe, we'll put over here. And now we'll go back and we'll start turning up the volume of these other singers. You can hear that in the mix. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. So now as we listen, you can hear Cindy and you can hear Amanda on your further left. So they're not crossing over between ear to ear. 
So you're able to hear a little bit more separation between uh, those vocals. If we put them in the middle, they tend to get a little mushy and hard to hear. Okay. This is a looping track. Let me see here, it just restarted. So if I was a vocalist, right now I can still hear that electric lead line, um, but the vocals are what really is gonna get me going. Um, it's really what I'm focusing on. So I've got my click. I know where the song is. I can still hear enough in the background. It's feeling pretty good if I was a vocalist. Again, if we were in the, in the audience, we'd probably want more drums. We'd want more bass guitar, but that's not going to be as important to us right now. So here we're going to get our vocals really coming in. So we're not really going to get a good feel for this because this was recorded on a Thursday with no one in the room. But if we wanted to get more of the audience feel, we can go into crowd. These are link channels. And we could turn up the crowd mics. So what you can't really see in this video is on the front of our stage, on the left and the right, there are two microphones on short little mic stands. Those are put at the audience to, uh, so that we can get connected with the room. We can hear the congregation worshiping alongside of us. It's not us singing to them. Worship is an experience where we're doing this together. We're worshiping the same God. It's not that we're on a stage and they're not. So put them in your mix. That's how we're gonna feel really connected. Um, so this mix here, you can turn up and down. Um, you're not just going to be getting the crowd singing through that. You also are going to get a bit of the PA, a bit of the room sound. So um, play around with that. I, I wouldn't go to a, a huge extreme, uh, but I also wouldn't leave it out. You are going to get yeah, PA bleed, room reverb, uh, which kind of has a really sweet feel to it. So really, really important to play around with, with that one. Uh, the other one that's not really, uh, really hard to demo right now, but worth knowing, is Channel 23, the talk video. Uh, this is going to be where all of our preaching mics are going to come into. So our, our preach announce mic are filtered into there, as well as anything that's coming in off of the pro presenter computers. So if we're playing a video, those are going to come into there. Uh, so if we're doing uh, an arrangement where it was uh, a song and then we're staying on stage while a video is playing or a, um, announcement pastors coming up to do something, that's all going to be in, in that channel. So it's important that we're going to have that up a little bit. Again, can't really demo that right now because we don't have that in this recording. Um, this could be a good idea. Now let's let's change the mix here. So we did that one for vocalists. So let's say that we were uh, an electric guitarist. So we'll go in, we'll change this mix a little bit. So we'll go into electric guitar. I want a lot more electric guitar if that's what I'm playing. So we'll probably want some acoustic. Maybe some bass. Yep. So I know I'm not going to want as many of the background vocals, so we're going to turn Cindy down. And since Matt's leading this song, I'm going to turn Marissa down. Maybe get her where I can hear her a little bit. So we're still hearing our click track. We can hear our guitar playing. Maybe a little bit more bass. So obviously we can hear that our instrument, what we're playing, is loudest, because that's gonna be most important for us to hear but we can still hear all of the supporting instruments. So there's the acoustic guitar. We didn't hear that in the, in the vocal mix because that wasn't as important uh, for getting that reference. But we want to make sure as instrumentalists we're providing space and openness for those other instruments to come through that we're not all stepping on each other. So now I can hear where that's coming through.
So we can still hear our click that's still coming through nice and loud. We can hear the lead vocalist coming through. This feels like a pretty good mix to me. Uh, you know, might, might tweak it a little bit more. So that's a pretty good start. And because our vocals are spread out, I can actually hear Marissa in my left ear and Matt in my right. So it's not as confusing. Whereas if they were center, let's actually show that here. So let's take Matt and let's put him right in the center. And we'll put Marissa in the center. And we'll turn Marissa up a little bit. Okay, so now that we've put Marissa and Matt both in the center, once they come in here at the chorus, you can hear that they kind of get mushy and on top of each other. Okay. So now let's go in and while they're singing, You can hear as we did that, and we only went a little bit. So you can see that panning where we're maybe a third left and right. How much of a space that opens up. So now I can hear in each ear that there's a very separate mix. So play around with that. Definitely lean into the, the panning functions. It's going to make a big difference.